In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about locations. I'm sure you've seen some of these nodes. They have these locations ports. Maybe you've used them, but I want to talk a little bit more about how these actually work. So let's start simple and ask, what is location? Now I'm using this node here, get close to location, to get the closest location from this locator on this geometry. So as I move this locator around, we can see this cheeky little circle down here, which is the location, is moving around as well. And it could be right at a point or vertex, but it could also be anywhere else on that geometric object. So what we can say is that a location is a position on a geometric object. And more specifically, it's a relative position. But I'm going to talk about that a little later. I also want to point out that this works also on strands or points objects. So the question becomes, if this is a position, why is this port looking like this? And why is it not looking like this one here? Because that's what I'm used to. I'm used to positions being vectors, three-dimensional vectors that I can use with math nodes and whatnot. I can't do this with this locations node. So in order to get vectors, I need another node, and that's called sample property. So I plug my mesh in here, put the locations into the corresponding port here, and then here I'll just set this to a flow three. And then this right here is gonna give me vectors. In this case, it's just a single one. It's still gonna be an array, so I'm gonna use first in array. And plug that in. If I output this, we can see we've got vector indeed and this will change based on where the location is. Cool. Now, the question then becomes, okay, this is all fine, but why can't I get this port right here? Why do I have to take this extra step? And this is something that took me a while to figure out, even though it's kind of obvious. There is this field here, right? This can be changed. It comes pre-filled with point position, but you could put anything you want in here. And more specifically, you should use a geo property. So if the whole idea of properties is a bit unclear to you, you can check out my video I made on that. But um, for instance, I could use point normal and sample it at that location. And so what that means is that it takes the property that we specify here in that field and it's then looking at the property where it exists so for instance this point position or point normal here 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 and then it's just sort of interpolating across them to get the value at this location so let's look at this a little more closely and for that i've got this little setup here already uh, i'm going to plug so I'm going to plug that location into here. But if you're wondering how to create this, it's simply just creating a value node. And come here to the other tab, custom. And you can come here to geolocation like that. And this is pretty much identical. You can open this up and here we go. It's the same. So I'm going to get rid of this. It's already got it. And then I'm just using print array to show me the values. So this is what I got now. Here's a key point that these locations in terms of polygons or meshes are based on triangles. So I'm going to split this into two triangles and I'm also using or putting the indices here. So these are the indices that make up the triangle. And you can see, as I move this across the line, the indices will change. So that should make sense because now we're in this triangle, zero, two, three. And these, for each triangle, we have these values here. And this is pretty much the location. And what we can observe here is that, first of all, these values are always between zero and one. So for instance, if I take that location, put it right where the index one is. This has a weight of one and everything else is zero. Likewise, 
this has a weight of one, everything else is zero. And then if it's along that edge, halfway between, it would be 0.5 for both. And then if it's somewhere in the middle, it's just a combination. So these are always between zero and one, and then they will also add up to one. Now the precision here isn't 100%, so I might get combinations where it isn't exactly adding up to one, but it doesn't matter in this case. And this is where the whole idea of it being a relative position comes into play, because this um, principle here could be applied to any triangle, right? So I could come here and I could duplicate this and uh, let's split this again. I can use this location, but on this geometry. So let's just do something really simple again with point position. I'm going to reuse this node. I'm not going to use the geometry. I'm simply taking this new plane I want to use the location on that new plane, and I want to create a point there. By the way, this is my own compound, but it's really basic. So now I have a point at that location, but transferred over to this geometry. So I can move that around, and this will update. And this could also be deformed and uh, should still work. And so this principle is something that I using in a video I made a while ago. It's called Scatter on Deformed, where I can show you how you could uh, scatter points on an object that is deforming. Because if you don't use this locations uh, trick, or whatever you want to call it, the points will not stick to the right spot. Okay, and finally, I just want to mention that I think I'm just going to get rid of this, don't need it anymore. I want to mention that if I took the point position, the vector for this point here, and multiplied it by that weight, this point position by that weight, and multiply this one by that weight, and add them all up. The resulting vector would be the one that defines the point position here. So let me show you. So I've already got a little setup here. These are the three points, point positions here. Building an array, and then now I want to multiply them by these weights here. And if I use some array to add up these vectors, if I come all the way up here. So this is the vector from the beginning. And then here we can see that this vector is identical to the other one. And that should be true anywhere on the triangle here. And that's how these um, locations work. These are basically called barycentric coordinates or weights. And uh, finally, just as an additional information, this index here would give me the index of the face now or a polygon. Now, I've only got one polygon, so I've only got this zero, but if this was a geometry, let's say I'm going to smooth this. So now we can see this guy right here is giving me index one. I can move it here now and face index two, three, four, and so on. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.